blue specs beer reviews, I'm going to be looking at Founders, Dirty Bastard. Um, Founders is a very, um, you know, it's a really good uh, brewing company. I mean, they put out some really, not, some really awesome stuff, I would say. Um, you know, their Porter, which I've had, their Centennial IPA, um, you know, if I could ever get the Kentucky Breakfast Stout or the Breakfast Stout, you know, then I would love to, but I haven't been able to as of yet. Um, Dirty Bastard is a Scotch, is a Scotch Ale, it's a wee heavy. Um, the beer gets a 95 on Beer Advocate, and the bros haven't, haven't reviewed it. Um, yeah, uh, it's 50 IBUs and 8.5 ABV, and you can typically buy Founders beers, you know, like the Porter, the, 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 the Dirty Bastard, the Pale Ale, the All Day IPA, the Centennial IPA, six packs for about $10, so that's what I bought this for, and I sent, um, I sent a little package to, for, uh, you know, a friend of mine on Instagram, you know, I typically post pictures of the, of the, of the beer I drink on, uh, Instagram, so I sent him Founders, he's, he's in California, because he can't get Founders, and he says, he's sent, sending me stuff, well, he did some, stuff, some, some things I, I can't get, so, I sent him a, a Porter, I, I found his, I found his Porter, two of these, and then a Founders Centennial IPA, so let's go ahead and crack this open and see what it's like, even though I've drank a couple already, so I kind of know what it's like, but I'll, I'll try to be, I'll try to be unbiased. I didn't see. I. There it is. Okay, there, there, was a, there was a bubble at the top, so that's why you know, it wasn't gonna come out. There's still a bunch of bottle, bubbles in. All right, pour it in my Guinness glass. So it's supposed to have like a scotch whiskey aroma and taste. And I don't see any sediment down there. Okay, well, I poured, I don't know, I poured very non, non-committally, but um, about two fingers of Creamy yet bubbly, light 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 brown to beige head. Looks creamy yet spongy. Uh, the body is um, it's, it appears to be clear, but the the color is really dark, so I can't see through all of it. Um, it's like a brown yet ruby color. You know, typical. You know, like I, I don't know. That's that's kind of what I would think of a. Scotch style ale to look like something like this. I've I've had maybe four other Scotch style ales, so I guess I don't know too much. But you know, yeah, I can't see through it too much. But you know, it's kind of like there's bubbles streaming up also. The smell is very complex. Well, you get that Scotch that whiskey kind of aroma for one thing yeah she's that and there's no one thing that's pre predominant in the aroma but there's just a lot of things there <sighs> fruits you know I wouldn't say that it's like a dark fruit that you would put maybe in a stout or even a quad like I mean no well quads have dark fruit and the lighter fruits but it has a bright fruity Aroma, like it's, you know how if you have a, a stout or a quad that has dark fruits like cherries and plums and all that stuff, and even figs, you know it's like a, you know dark fruit fruit aroma. This is not like that. It's just it's very it's very fruity, but it's like a bright fr fruitiness. It's very bright the, the smell is. So that fruit along with that scotchness. Now if you want to have like a beer that is totally scotch like the Bol Boulevard has a uh, smokestack series which is um, double barrel quad where 
the only thing you can really taste is like that that bourbon barrel aged flavor, and that's really all you get. I mean, you can get some well, some other stuff, but you know, it's like this is that, but I mean that that it's this is not bourbon though. It's a different kind of whiskey. It's like candy sugar, maybe a little bit like toffee, maybe caramel. <sighs> smells really nice. That lacing's nice. Let's go ahead and give this a taste and see what this is like. And when I first, you know, tried this, I was worried that it would be overwhelming and too much, too much fruit or too much, you know, um, whiskey flavor, um, too much, um, scotchness. Okay, well, yeah, you get, like, candy, like that candy sugar, but it's more like a toffee flavor, you know, that caramely toffiness, and I can't really pick out which one, but it's like a candiness, sweetness, the, the taste is not like a coin sweet, like, there's not a whole lot of sweet there, it's sweet at first, but then it backs off and you get a nice you know, chill, bitter, scotch thing going going for you. So, um, yeah, uh, you get that toffee, caramel, candy, sugarness. Not 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 like a Belgian ale, but it's just like a. I I would I more would say it's like toffee. You do get barley malts. The flavor, which is, you know, you know, at first every, everything is kind of all together, and then the sweetness backs off, and you get those fruits, also, but it's not too, it's not really sweet at all. Like at, the, at first it's sweet, and then and then, and then it backs off. Like I said, um, you know, it's not. You can still pick up the light, bright fruit, fruitiness, uh, along with that Scotch styleness, that Scotch whiskiness. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. If I can ever find, there's a another brew which is a limited one that Founders makes called the Backwoods Bastard, and that I think is actually doubly barrel aged, like much more than this. So I, I'm sure I'm thinking that that would also be good. But this is really nice. Um, so yeah, you get that toffiness, that fruitiness and that broadly malt flavors all together and then you get that when you exhale you can kind of taste that whiskiness. Now at 8.5 ABV there's no alcohol coming through like you know when I say I taste that scotch ale-ness I'm just saying I can pick up the flavor but there's no heat heat coming through there's no stinging in there and no 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 alcohol coming through which is really nice you know if if they can, you know, pull that off, that's a great, it's a great, great thing to do. So it, this is really nice. Um, the mouthfeel is, I would say, right at medium. Um, it's a, it's a good bit of stickiness, similar to like a porter or a stout. A little bit of effervescence of the bubbles on the tongue. I think it's still like a sipper. You know, you can't gulp this down. So refreshingness is not, that really isn't a word, but it, it's not entirely re refreshing. It's a sipper, maybe a little bit of gulps here and there. Um, drinkability is medium. You know, it, again, it is, you know, a sipper, I would say. It's not like, you know, one of those bigger beers. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not like a Bourbon County Stout from, uh, Goose Island, where you are really gonna have to sip it, or like a uh, Travis Trappist Roquefort ten eight or whatever. Those I've had, and those are you know more of sipper than than this. But this is a sipper, but it's not you know as as big or as you know thick thickly flavored as some of those bigger beers. Um, <laughs> how would I rate this? There's 
all good positive aspects and no bad aspects. Plus, I'm, I'm enjoying it entirely. So if you like Scotch Ales, if you like the Wee Heavies, um, I would say it's something that you that you should try. Typically, I think anything, if you see this little label on, this little founder's label, and you're into, and you're into, into craft beer, then you have to try it. It's just... If you can get your hands on anything for fruit from these guys, no matter what any what no matter what anyone else says, pick it up. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna go A plus here. Um, it's one of the better Scotch styles, sc Scotch style ales I've had. I just think it's awesome, and I'm, I'm glad I have two more two more to drink. <laughs> 